Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Raw review with me, NJ, and... Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ross Parks, and for this one-off only, I'm a special guest on the British Fish YouTube channel. And let's dive straight into this Raw review, because it's the Raw before SummerSlam, and we're here to share our thoughts. And in the opener, we had... Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Paul Heyman, and he is the one... Behind the one in 21 and 1. And it's his client, Barack Lesnar. And it's just basically what he'd been doing last week. Making um, Lesnar look like a, you know, a killer compared to John Cena. This is Brock's house now. Yeah. So what So what it's actually meaning, because the way I see it, is that Brock Lesnar is more likely going to do his disappearing act after SummerSlam or Night Champion. That might be the case, but it's still Brock's house and everyone's a visitor in Brock's house. But but what does that mean? Because what does it, his house mean when he's not going to be there? He still owns it. Brock Lesnar will come back and take charge when he wants to with the title because Brock Lesnar is the monster and the beast. With Lesnar's stupid contract, don't you think that it's going to continue and he's not going to be on TV? So why would the WWE pay someone who's got their championship to not be on TV at their future pay-per-views. Because it makes the title more special when it is defended. And when the champion shows up on Raw, Heyman's there. Heyman will be there every week. But when Lesnar's there and the title's up on the line, it makes it feel more special. So when it comes to pay-per-views like Head in the Cell, let's say Brock's not meant to be there, what's going to be their drawing match without the championship? You could put one of your heat heated feuds, I think, if WWE decide to book a feud that lasts longer than four weeks... You could put a heated feud in the main event in the Hell in a Cell match. It doesn't have to be for the title of every single beat, especially with the network now. Because they're not selling pay-per-views. The network. How much is that again? Do we, do we need Jerry Lawler to answer this for us? I think he does. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold a sign-up, yeah. We'll put one in the middle. 9 99 oh, oh, 9 99 That was it. That's it. But <clears throat> do you think Paul Ernst should have spoken this opener? No. When Brock Lesnar picks up the microphone, nothing good happens. Paul oh. Heyman should do all the talking, except except for in pre-recorded video packages. So that's where when Lesnar talks, he's at his best. What do you think that video package last week? They didn't show it on Raw, which was slightly disappointing. They showed different parts of it. Lesnar was just swearing, which is fantastic, because you can imagine that's what Brock Lesnar is like in real life. You would just swear for the sake yep, of it. and I'm going to kill you. That's, <laughs> all, that's all Brock Lesnar needs to say. And you can. And Brock Lesnar is one of the only believable people that can say that, and you think, yeah, he would. With Stone Cena overcoming the odds, as he mentioned that he's coming to fight in the later promo he cuts, don't you think that Cena has a chance of hurting or taking down Brock Lesnar? You put as Heyman said, Cena's calendar's out of date. <laughs> that, that was funny. <laughs> I think Heyman is classic gold when he uh, the rap the rap. We were talking about this before Raw, and I think the rap probably one of the best that I've heard. It's the best PG rap I've heard. Well, well Rock's one weren't too bad. But he, he still swore a little bit in that. Heyman did it without swearing or referencing anything that John Cena would be nuts or blowing him or anything. <laughs> Heyman, Heyman didn't say anything like that. But are you looking forward to this match at SummerSlam? Yes, this is the biggest draw. This is the big draw for SummerSlam. I think there's a match that is slightly up there, even though the match type, we'll get to it later, could be better than this match. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for this match, but and also, well, the selling point of SummerSlam is Cena Lesnar. There's no doubt about. There's no other match that matches up to that to sell SummerSlam. It just depends on the result now. Because are oh, we going to have a rehash of Extreme Rules 2000? Brock has to win. Lesnar has to win. There's no other way around it. The way that fans felt of Kane surrendering his mask, looking sad and sorry for himself, you thought that was the end. But I said to you before, let, let's look at it from if from a logical point. He came to his job badly every single week. He lost every week for the authority, so then he gets a promotion. That makes no <laughs> sense. That's not logic. I know the <laughs> WWE are struggling to come up with logical sense in some of their feuding, but you were saying that how you're getting sick and tired of Kane, Kane should be done, and how you're just supporting the fact it's not, that he's... It's not that Kane should be done. It's I'm not happy of seeing Kane in pay-per-view main events anymore. Kane's been there since 1997, that's 17 years. For years on end, in the in like the last 10 years, Kane has been a mid-card jobber. 
and then we can just put the mask back on him and yeah he's back in the main event and it makes all 100% sense and we've been to forget everything that happened before well I get I, I, as much as I'd love to see the monsters came back he's never going to be the real monster came because the WWE have moved on to the PG era and Kane's getting older now and they've got other monsters to possibly take Kane's place but what did you think of seeing the WWE giving him his corporate Kane rollback? It's another authority figure. Again? We just do not need... We, they were doing so well getting rid of the GMs. I've been saying to you for months, there's no need for GMs anymore. You've got Triple H and Stephanie running the show. Just leave it at that. Well, that does lead on to the fact that Kane seems to be in full power again, even though Triple H was disappointed with him in last week. And Kane makes the match to overpower Roman Reigns and creates the match which you predicted as Bride Baxel. So that was was it two minutes before they came out of the gun? Yep, Bride Baxel will be out here. I was really <laughs> surprised because over the last month they've been teasing not a push for Bride Baxel, but a possible SummerSlam match, not a pre show match for the tag team championship. So for them to on the go home show go against Roman Reigns, the guy they're trying to push and put over, you knew what was going to come out of this. And as soon as they came out, I said to you, DQ finish, Roman Reigns will get the upper hand at the end, which happened with a with a, the first time I've ever seen it, somebody got DQ for throwing somebody into the ring post. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, at first I thought it would be a count out, but no, a DQ because both men at the same time was beating down Roman Reigns. They could have done it in a way where... He would have been getting on top and Randy Orton would have come out and laid out Roman Reigns. But then we saw Randy Orton after he was in a match later in the night. But then Roman Reigns' is promo. Oh, please, no. Uh, Roman Reigns is in the same category as Brock Lesnar. And the less talking he does, the better. Right now, Roman Reigns might get better. He's still young. But right now, it's 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 some, t- some of the things Roman Reigns says is just cringeworthy. I want to compliment Roman Reigns because he cut a good promo, uh, I think, after the last pay-per-view. It was not bad, but this one, I'm sorry, he, he, I bet he knew they weren't doing a good job. When Roman Reigns was in the Shield on promos, he was kind of shielded, I get the point, by Ambrose and Rollins on the mic. Roman Reigns would say two lines at the end, was it, believe in the Shield and believe in Roman Reigns. Now he's more exposed, he does need to get better at cutting promos. Especially when he's talking up to the authority, who are obviously the top of their game, the top of their thing. But talking about Orton while we're here, Orton ended up facing the returning guy, the guy who is not making it to SummerSlam, Sheamus. Let's ask a question. Is there anyone that you could care less about on the roster right now than Sheamus? You've asked me this. I was trying to think. I named some names like Adam Rose, Party Swagger, but obviously you counted them saying that uh, Swagger is actually in a working feud and get over now and uh, Adam Rose is not on TV each week. You know, Seamus is there. He's getting put on TV in a prominent role every week and I just do not care. I don't know what everyone else thinks, but I just do not care about Seamus. Anyway, that, he needed to turn heel six months ago. As much as Seamus did get strongly, heavily booking as the face, but when you turn all things, he was the smiley, you know. Yes, we, he needed to turn heel. You're saying Seamus needs to turn heel. But Orton's heel turn didn't work out for him. I don't think Sheamus, the guy who's no longer the guy anymore for the WWE, I don't think, I think Sheamus is one of the wrestlers who should just be there to put talent over as a face or heel, because he's not going to be over again. It's not going to happen because you know that WWE will only have him lose to big names like Randy Orton. I know it's not part of this match, but you had Big Show return on a house show and then you had a SmackDown match last week. You had Mark Henry return and beat up uh, Sandow. You have Sheamus return, his first actual TV match and the US champion who's not at SummerSlam faces an opponent who has to win so you knew what was coming and it happened. So everything in this match we've seen before, we've seen, I know it was an, an entertaining finish but we've seen the arc out of the top rope how many times? We've seen Randy Orton Sheamus how many times? I suppose now that Del Rio's gone, though, Seamus needs to face somebody uh, somebody new every single week like he did with Del Rio. Well, I think we're going to get, yeah, we may get the repetitive feud, Orton, Ziggler. But I just think the US Championship not being at SummerSlam, the repetitive match, like you said, 
the finish we've seen uh, this match I just didn't care about it I did not care I was calling the spots in this match while it was going on just before it happened and 9 times out of 10 I got them right yeah numerous <laughs> times you said this is going to happen Sheamus is going to do this and predictability seen before I don't really care and this match as well got, I think this match got 15 minutes as well maybe a bit less but yeah I, I, I give the WWE credit for giving each match some time but I just don't care. But is, is the US title on Chambers really necessary? At first, I thought it was a good idea because it had to be taken off Ambrose. It had to. Shames, I thought, okay, he's a name in the WWE. Let's see what they do with it. I might change the question, actually. Is the US title itself really necessary anymore? No, no. And this brings up a whole different topic, but I'll, while you're here, Combine the belts, they've missed the opportunity to do it at SummerSlam, but do you think the mid-card championship should be combined? If they have the right person they want to put it on and a storyline for them, you don't just want to put two titles on somebody and then go, now we have nothing for them. Let's bury them every single week on Raw. And that gets into my point, then beating your mid-card champions, but the person that wins never actually becomes champion. No, it's slightly <laughs> disappointing, but... Like, before Barrett got injured, I think that would have been a SummerSlam match, but obviously Barrett's not here. But didn't they ruin that, because they were giving us Barrett versus Sheamus on Raw every week, and then if we'd have seen it at SummerSlam, it'd be like, well, this is, we've seen this match 50 times before already. The only difference is that one of the two would have came the WWE US Intercontinental Champion. <laughs> the United Intercontinental States Champion. That's the better name, <laughs> yes, there we go. But... Do you think they should still do the possibility of combining the championships at a later pay-per-view? I'm with my view on belts and titles. I think less is more. So if they're going to do it and get rid of the US title, fine. If they're going to get rid of the world title as well, absolutely fine. The less belts you have, the better, because then the belts you've got booked properly will mean more. So we should be left with the Intercontinental? Yes, and the US title should slowly disappear. Okay, so when the match happens, the Intercontinental Champion will have to win. My, last, my next question is, push the to a side because he's not at SummerSlam. Even, even if he is, it'd be a filler match against someone who's not going to beat Sheamus. Orton, he's facing Roman Reigns. Before we talk about the result, would you rather have seen Triple H Reigns or are you happy with Orton? I'm going to say Randy Orton, who was in the same, till a few weeks ago for me, was in the same category as Kane. I was like, just had enough. I was like, Randy Orton can't do anything now that's going to entertain me. But he's proved me wrong over the last few weeks when he's turned more into the aggressive Randy Orton. I've been kind of getting more into his character. And Triple H is the same as the US title. I think now less is more. The, the less Triple H has a match, the more it means. Because he went for a run at the start of this year. Was it three or four in a row? And he lost. <laughs> yeah, but then then it takes a speciality of way of when Triple H does have a match. If Triple H had one or two matches a year, when he got in the ring, it would mean more. Well, as much as I want to back that up, I'll get to Orton in a minute. But Triple H, he was being teased to have a problem with Roman Reigns. He wanted to take down Roman Reigns. Orton did it by attacking him on Raw. That should have been Triple H's chance to say, right, Reigns is hurt. I'm going to put myself against him. I really don't care about Orton versus Reigns. I have no problem with Randy Orton. Roman, as long as Roman Reigns wins... I have no problem with this match. Um, Triple H, you can hold it off. Well, you don't even mean look at the Triple H big triangle. That's how they teased that and just dropped it. Well, as much as that had a story, this one is a must-see because Reigns is a new guy compared to Big Show. Reigns needs this big, important match. Triple H is more likely still going to wrestle in the ring. I think him versus Reigns would be an epic big match. But if they're not going to do it at SummerSlam, you should, they should try and save that for a Rumble then. Unless they're going to Roman Reigns win the Royal Rumble. Or do Roman Reigns Triple H Hell in a Cell. That could be the Hell in a Cell main event if Lesnar's not going to be there. So somehow they're going to drag... Well, not drag, unless you're enjoying this. They're going to make this storyline go on till Hell in a Cell. Well, they've got to now because Triple H doesn't even exist in this feud anymore with Roman Reigns. It's Randy Orton. Triple H has just taken a complete backseat. Well, Triple H did send Orton to hurt or take care of Roman Reigns. So Triple H is partly involved. He is, but not directly anymore. People don't look at this feud now and think Triple H. I think Orton Reigns. But you're saying, even though I'm disappointed that the Triple H match is not taking place, this pay-per-view, Reigns is going to beat Orton. Yeah, Roman Reigns has to win. 
Roman Reigns is the next one with a push. Randy Orton can take a loss and be absolutely fine. They'll still be in the same spot the next week. I feel really, really sorry for Cesaro. People say he looks good in the match. That's his saving grace. But the amount of matches he's lost, he could become a Dolph Ziggler. He could, but in this on this episode of Raw, the way it's booked right now, I have no problem with this match and the way it ended because Swagger has the match. Cesaro doesn't at SummerSlam. Swagger had to win. That, yeah, that was the same thing as, I think, last week when Cesaro faced... Ziggler he faced last week. I think, and they said, yeah, Ziggler should have won. But the fact is, yeah, you're using someone who's not got a SummerSlam match, but Cesaro's a new name for the WWE, someone who they possibly still want to push, look good. So how do you go through a losing streak? What's that going to mean for after SummerSlam? This guy's lost multiple matches. I'll say something, remember, at the second biggest pay-per-view of the year. At, the, at WrestleMania this year, which is the biggest, look at the position that Sw- uh, Swagger and Cesaro in the night after WrestleMania compared to now. You're backing me up. I, you, I thought you were on the side of Cesaro losing. No, this match. It, say on, on this night, in this situation, Swagger had to win. But I'm saying overall, Cesaro should not be in the position he is. But right now, last night, Swagger should have won the match. I just think they should have chosen someone else instead of Cesaro. Uh, Cesaro. Maybe they could have gone with. So who, we got. We need a heel. I think they could have gone with, you know, wouldn't be the same, Sandow. Comedy character Sandow. Yeah, he, he could play a heel doing that. Or he could have had Bo Dallas. He hasn't got a, at this moment in time. But Dallas was something. two weeks in a row or whatever it is. He can't, he can't be 18 2. Well, he lost <laughs> last week because he uh, did the quick, was it, it was a deep little roll up on our truth. Either way, he's not got a SummerSlam match. It doesn't matter. I feel sorry for Cesaro. Yeah, I do as well, but as I said, on Raw this week, Cesaro needed to lose this match. And it was, it did get a lot of time, this match did. Was it 20, 15, 20 minutes? It's back for, for a match that is not a main match for Raw, yes, you're trying to, say, use up time, but Swagger getting a... Yes, it, it saves Cesaro from getting a quick uh, pinfall, but... I've got to say as well, the build-up in this match for Rusev, Swagger was so lazy. That was it, just wave flags and... That's it. Segment. And there was no, maybe we'll get on Smackdown, but no Lana, even though, they're promos, I'm, I know it didn't happen tonight, but um, Lana's and Colter's promos, they're so repetitive and boring. I I, I, I do like Zeb Coulter though when he, when he talks, I think that Zeb Coulter does change up slightly every week. Maybe it adds a few extra words, but it's like, one side, Rasha, and then we have Oh, the people of America, please stand up. It's the same thing. They may say a few extra words like, Swagger is the great guy that's going to kick your ass, but it's the same thing each week to me. But listen to the crowd reaction, apart from this week, because the crowd on Raw this week were awful. But usually the crowd reactions, people are booing Rusev, he's getting major heat, and people are right behind Jack Swagger. Again, I think that's very temporary. I think probably when this finishes, if they've got a few lined up for Swagger, Maybe it'll be different, but right now, I think the only reason this is working is more because the managers and because you're meant to boo Rusev and cheer the face. I will give WWE credit for this one. I think they've got the reactions they want for this feud at the fans there, which is not usual for them. Usually, people will just go against it and cheer the heel because we don't like John Cena or Sheamus or whoever, but they've actually got the right reactions for the right people in this feud. As long as this continues after, I'll continue to give Swagger some credit. If it drops, then I don't see Jack Swagger lasting long after this. What do you think of Rusev Swagger? Because obviously... I'm into the Jack Swagger character, I'm not going to lie. Jack Swagger and Zeb have really got got me interested in them in the last couple of months. To the point now where I actually wouldn't mind seeing Jack Swagger win. I've just never been a Jack Swagger fan. Why? Like, his pushes in the past have never been secured enough to actually make it anywhere. Why is this... Because time- when before Swagger was on his own, and Jack Swagger talking, again, wasn't good. He just, cause it, I know it's not right, but because he's got the lisp, and his promos weren't the best, but as soon as he got Zeb, they got a catchphrase, and that's the first thing to get an over in WWE, is get a catchphrase. Now they're starting to get T-shirts made for them. Swagger's, Swagger's starting to get pushed. Do you think once the Rusev feud is over, Swagger's going to go crashing down? It entirely depends. 
on how they end. If Rusev beats Swagger clean and annihilates Nazi, Jack Swagger's done. So you think that brings up the SummerSlam match? So at SummerSlam, who's winning? They could get away with it in a flag match. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Swagger won at SummerSlam the flag match, and then they push the feud on for one more month, and then Rusev would beat him at Night of Champions in some either sort of stipulation match or just beat him 100% clean, and Swagger's push is done then. I feel that after SummerSlam, yeah, I feel that Swagger will get the win because it's just a simple flag match, but Rusev is obviously the one there pushing, so in a United Champions match, Rusev would have to win. Yeah, Rusev probably will win the feud in the end, but if they're going to continue, I could see Swagger winning at SummerSlam. So from the entertaining spot where Ambrose uh, ripped up um, Seth Rollins' uh, main bank contract, he... Uh, stole uh, two fans' drink and popcorn and destroyed or tried to destroy JBL's hat. He actually got to face Rob Van Dam. Speaking of the Seamus Orton being a repeat too much, how many times have we seen this one there? And usually it has the same finish. RVD spikes himself on top of his own head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ho- like, with all of that, I'm... Uh, Rob Van Dam fans may hate, ECW fans might hate, but I don't think the WWE should be keeping Rob Van Dam around because since he's returned, he's not had a real feud, he's not had a real reason to be here. Yes, he's here to possibly put names over, but it, it's not exciting. not like they could use anyone to face Rollins tonight or last week. Why Bob and Dam? I have no problem with the short-term contracts of people, like with Jericho or Batista or RVD or Lesnar, but as long as they contribute something to the show and to the programme going forward. What has RVD contributed since he's come back? He's lost. Precisely. And lo- he's lost to the point where RVD losing means nothing. Yeah, and it's not like... like RVD may still do OK spots in the ring, but obviously... That's why we got this point. That's what I got this point in Jericho because he was losing each pay per view match, not really being the Jericho we all love and like. And Rob Van Dam bringing him back and um, losing. I know you have, like we said multiple times over the night, Rollins needed to win, but. But putting him in the same match that we see him again in with the same person every single week. What does it achieve for either person? We know that Seth Rollins can beat RVD, so why do they need to have a rematch? Even though last week weren't actually a proper... No, but they must have had four or five matches before that as well, and Rollins has won every single one. The, the thing about the match, we can compare it the match as much as we can, but... But we'll have to say as well that RVD does sell the curb stomp the best in WWE. I pointed that out to you last night. That, that move... I think that it's not like the biggest, strongest, best move. Like, if you did that to Big Show or Mark Henry, I don't think it would work. I don't think it would pay off. But the way RVD sells it, it looks absolutely devastating. A small guy, <laughs> smaller guy like Rob Van Dam, yes. Rob, RVD's got a thing of landing on top of his own head if you look closely. So when he takes an arcade, he does that as well, lands on top of his own head. Well, that's the ECW style, <laughs> That's the ECW style. We'll break our own necks, damn it. <laughs> yeah, they don't really care about their, themselves. But Ambrose... You know, I didn't expect him to be in the present. I really didn't see that coming. All I'm going to say, Seth Rollins is an absolute idiot. He bought this on himself. If he'd have just walked to the back, none of that would have happened. Instead, he stood there, looked at a present, thought Ambrose was in there. So instead of walking off, he decided to hang around it until Ambrose eventually, I mean, after what, five minutes, eventually came out. He was like, I'm a bit suspicious of that <laughs> present. It's the size of Ambrose. Ambrose has not been here tonight. He's in there. You know, let's poke it. Let's just make him aware that I'm actually here now. <laughs> and the 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 attack. Eh, well, this is what I'm sick and tired of. Not all Hill's been doing it. I'll give like Bray Wyatt the credit. Probably Orton recently. He him running off. I'm sick and tired of the WWE having some to most of their heels running off. I saw the point to this though. It's them trying to justify. Why they made a match that made no sense. They made a lumberjack match for this feud that needed a street fight or some sort of hardcore match because that's what they've been doing brawling backstage to a lumberjack match to stop Seth Rollins running off even though Seth Rollins before this week hasn't run off once. That's what I was going to say. You you beat me to it because the lumberjack, yes, the lumberjack matches suck. I'm going to say that. The lumberjacks don't really attack when they come out of the ring. They just throw them back to the ring. So the lumberjack are basically like a spring to put them back to the ring. And, yeah, the point you made, 
they don't uh, have a reason to have a lumberjack because Seth Rollins has been fighting against Ambrose, trying to prove that he's Mr. Made of Bank and a competitor against Ambrose. And this match comes out of nowhere. Because they made the lumberjack match and I thought, oh wait, we need a reason. Seth Rollins needs to run away. Just just so we can say that's the reason we have the lumberjack match. On the go home show. It's stupid. The only thing I'm going to say, you, you counted me quite strongly, but I think Ambrose got to pick the match. He chose the lumberjack, but Triple H gets to choose the lumberjacks and they're all going to be he, uh, heels to beat up. I think this lumberjack match is going to be people coming out who are going to be future endeavoured pretty quickly, and it's our last look at them. <laughs> so who are we expecting to see? Zack Ryder. Oh. Tyson O'Neill. Um, <laughs> Sandow. Yeah, just all the people that you, with all these budget cuts going on. While we're here, Woods, Kofi, and Langston, because they're no longer together. <laughs> do, 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 you, do you want my opinion on that now? Go ahead. Vincent Mann talks about Raw being a television show, not, not a wrestling show, a TV show, and they make movies every week. Picture, I'm thinking, if if somebody made a TV show or a movie and they decided to start a new story, so just take, for example, EastEnders, they start a storyline and then you, you get kind of interested in what's going to happen and then you turn on the next day just to see what's going to happen next and it's just gone. There's no mention of what's happened. Those three people are just back to doing their normal life and what started just gets dropped. It makes no sense. It's a bad television show. It was terrible. Yeah, I agreed that. Obviously, it wouldn't make much sense to... EastEnders, a UK top soap, and people watching it, and all of a sudden one storyline is changed completely the next week. It's not even changed, it's dropped. It's like it never happened. These people, that segment where Xavier Woods cut that promo, never happened. No, we're going to see Kofi back into a tag team in a couple of weeks. We're going to see Langston jobbing out to Rusev for the rest of his career. And Woods will be released. Is where Monday Night Raw took a sharp downturn for me, and I just sat there going, no. When the fans were going, yes, 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 I was sat there going, oh, God, no. <laughs> I think that Brie Bella and Stephanie needed a in-ring confrontation where Brie was going to get the upper hand on Steph, probably. But I was not, I was not expecting this. This storyline was fine. There was no need to alter it. The story was there. Why this match was happening, it made sense. It had been built up for a few months. Why? Why would you bring in, what was it, a physical therapist? Who isn't even the greatest looking woman in the world is apparently having an affair with Daniel Bryan, who's one of the nicest people in the world, who we all know genuinely is, who has just got married to Brie Bella. And Daniel Bryan is the least per- least person you'd expect to have an affair. If it was the affair, the only thing I would have done, you had an affair with Nikki Bella. That would have made more sense than this. <laughs> yeah, but then John Cena would have been out there and we'd have a big feud on the slab. A feud? John Cena's heel to- No, no. <laughs> um, but, oh, I'm sorry, Claire Lynch. Part three. It was just terrible. If WWE are going to rip off storylines from TNA, why would you choose the bad ones? And you were saying that this is the second time the WWE have ripped off TNA with the same similar storyline. Yes, there was the whole John Cena, AJ, Vicky Guerrero, the affair that was completely fine, but they tried to build it up to something that wasn't. And now they've done it again, and I'm sorry, I want to make this short and sweet. This sucked. Brie getting temporarily arrested is not going to change the match. Megan, as you were pointing out, is probably going to get paid off at SummerSlam Smackdown afterwards. They better not drag this on. No, I was going to say, Stephanie didn't take the S lock the best either. She made it like a chokehold. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was trying to show that, oh, I can get out of this. She's not going to get this lock in. It, it looked like a na- rear naked choke instead of a yes lock. So hopefully they, they work on that before SummerSlam. But who's going to win out of these two? Brie Bella has to win. There's I'm... No- no other way, Brie Bella has to win. I think the McMahon should come up, like, there's always going to be a plan B. Yes, we're not using Nikki now. Maybe Megan's a former UFC uh, female wrestler, maybe. But I think Nikki... Uh, One punch knockout from the physical therapist. There we go. <laughs> so that's what she's been trained to do. All that crying was just an act. But I think Stephanie winning, yes, it will stretch the storyline across, but while the Paige and AJ thing, which we're going to get to after we spoke about this horrible segment... While that's still going on, possibly after SummerSlam, why not continue this for two months? Was this? Do you think this may have been teasing the return of Daniel Bryan in a couple of in a month or two? No, he, he's he's. I know he's injured. He, he's he, he, he can't show his face it's, after this affair. It's because we face. all know that this affair is real. This, I do. This segment reminded me of Vince Russo, <laughs> and that is not a good thing. It's he, a swerve for no reason that makes no sense. Your storyline's already there. Why, why do you need to add this extra? I oh, know they tried to get Bree to get arrested again for slapping her to get 
Stephanie to get revenge for Brigitte, but it was not needed. It was just a waste of time. Plus, in ring competition, you could have had Brie do that the bell chokehold thing, but I don't think the Megan thing that she's probably going to show her face one more time. But this was just terrible. What would what would you prefer to have seen? What do you, what would have made you more excited for SummerSlam? This or just a pull apart brawl? I think even though we've seen that Stephanie can execute a good pedigree, two of them, I still think a brawl and seeing Steph do another manoeuvre. I don't think they need, they just need to brawl outside, the, but going out the ring, have them get pulled apart, and they say, I'm going to kick your ass at SummerSlam, job done, match built, stories there, everyone wants to see it. This put me off the match. I was actually quite excited for the Stephanie Brie Bella match, now I'm just thinking, why? The only uh, upside I'm going to see of this is Stephanie gets in the ring, at SummerSlam, she says, start the count, Bree's not here, one, two, three, up to eight, and then out she comes, and you can look, but you can't touch, <laughs> <laughs> and the match happens, but we've got different opinions, we have Bree Bella here, Step here, who do you think's going to win, between the two divas at SummerSlam, remember as well, Triple H told to the pedigree, he's got plan B, he could be the sledgehammer, oh yes, <laughs> This match should be a no holes barred then. Or just for a sledgehammer attack on a woman. Yes. PG era. Step to Brie. <laughs> but while we're talking about Divas, the uh, AJ versus Eva Marie, the match that we all knew who was going to win. We, Eva Marie got to do her finisher. The badly executed roll up. <laughs> <laughs> but this match, we had Seth Lines last week uh, getting an embarrassing win. Eva Marie, who can't wrestle, as you pointed out, from NXT, and her finish, as you said, the roll-up, defeated our Divas champion. Ouch. I'm going to say that every single Raw has to complete the set. You have to have a distraction roll-up, a count-out, and a DQ finish on every single episode of Raw. And that's what we got tonight? Yeah. Every, every single Raw has, that, has an ending of those matches. But in this match, Paige came out. <sighs> ran around the ring AJ I don't know what AJ did but she stood up she had a back her. turned yes Eva Marie rolled AJ up and then when when she pinned her which okay fair enough it's not but it's just okay I accept that's why it happened Eva Marie still there celebrating in the ring and Paige ran off then Paige read a promo is that what a poet a poet thing? yes this was brilliant I love this it was but then what, what they, they cut back to the ring even Marie was lying on the floor like she'd been beaten up, but nobody had touched her for five minutes. She was there rubbing her ankle. I'm just like, you could go go in the audience or done the WWE disappearing act where one minute they're in the ring, next minute they're not. And then she just got attacked. She stood there celebrating in the ring, though, because she won. But then they cut back five minutes later and she was lying on the floor like AJ kicked the crap out of her. I just, that, I just I was like, what? did I miss something? It's just terrible booking. I can't believe how AJ did not try, even try to kick out that pin. How even Marie didn't try to escape. I'm sorry. You, has has this this poet poetry and match got you looking forward to their this match? This was another one of those matches that was fine the way it was. This match had been built. There's a story behind it. You know, you clearly know who's the face, who's the heel. They didn't need to do anything like this to advance it anymore. They could have just had. They could have had a promo with each other. But the some following SmackDown, I'm glad that they continued the explanation and forwarded a bit more. Did, but it didn't achieve any unless they want to make even Marie the number one contender after SummerSlam. <laughs> but I want to say one more thing is that. Um, AJ Lee and Paige could have been a submission match at the SummerSlam. We've already seen how many matches there now? Three. So it, it would have been time to add some sort of stipulation to it. They both have, even though you could say uh, Emma has a good submission, but these two... We don't talk about her at the moment. No. <laughs> I think these two could have had a great submission match. And TNA, yeah, I'm going to give them credit. They gave their Divas a knockout, numerous stipulation matches. The WWE have a great one here, and it's not happening. The, these two women, I will say that you remember like in 2003, 2004 where they had the Divas like Lita and Victoria and Trish and they were experimenting with like Divas ladder matches and yeah. age matches. These two, I actually think, would pull off a stipulation match that they've never done before. 
And so that's probably a little bit too. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, yeah, could you you could see Page and AJ in the tables match? Even though they've not teased a, a table match, but I do understand that these two, because they're meant to be the two top divas in the WWE at this present time. Yeah, I think experimenting with these and making their future matches. Because I think, who's going to win? I wouldn't be surprised because they've got no other divas left who are in any position to challenge right now. If they did a screw finish and did like a double DQ or a double count out just to try and continue the feud on. Because I've got nobody else to challenge, AJ or Paige, whoever wins. Unless Paige wins, then AJ gets a rematch. But if AJ wins again, Paige should be done in the title scene then. I think, I think either, I think, let's go with AJ. I think AJ is going to pass John Cena's championship run. She'll be the 16 time <laughs> Divas champion. She, that means she's going to have to lose it and win it back every month. That's, that's what they do. <laughs> Between AJ and Paige, each month, each two months, they'll switch. WrestleMania to 32, AJ Lee will win a 16th Divas title. There we go, we booked it. You know, Chris, follow the buzzards. Yes, the backstage promo between Bray Wyatt and Jericho. I did like, she liked seeing Chris Jericho in a suit. It reminded me of Hill, Chris Jericho in 2010. You should have started calling Bray Wyatt a parasite and stuff like you did back then. All that, you know, I can compliment Jericho. I'm glad Jericho is proven that he's great on the mic and stuff. But Jericho did not. Maybe it will happen on SmackDown. This is uh, recorded before SmackDown, before the results, spoilers come up. But Jericho has not beaten up Bray Wyatt. No, that's why I said to you, every single week it was Bray Wyatt laying out Jericho every single week with the sister Abigail. You could predict that, and I'm glad this week I didn't do it. What I do like about this, though, is that Chris Jericho isn't treating Bray Wyatt as just a normal nobody, whereas, will you please shut the hell up, welcome to Raw, because he's treating Bray Wyatt as an actual threat, and that's the way Bray Wyatt should be treated, because he's a complete madman. He let Bray Wyatt speak, but I think Jericho, even though he didn't physically get the best of Bray Wyatt in wrestling wise but promo wise I can't Bray Wyatt was doing the same last week promo and Jericho in a few words he didn't have to go on for about three minutes he just did a one minute thing and yeah, but Bray Wyatt turned to be a raving madman if Bray Wyatt just sat there and went I'm going to beat you Chris that wouldn't fit in with his character Bray Wyatt's meant to talk in long sentences where he just doesn't make sense because he's meant to be a lunatic well, well why didn't like they sent away Michael Cole, which made me laugh. But why didn't the lights go off? And the Wyatt family, as soon as Jericho said his piece, the Wyatt family attacked. I knew, because somehow I just felt that Jericho needed to do a little bit more than that. Harper and Rowan aren't involved in this feud because they've been banned from ringside. At SummerSlam. So they're not involved at the moment. What did you think of the segment overall? I quite enjoyed Jericho. Bray Same Wyatt. Here. I understood why he was like that, because that's his character, but it's kind of the same. But who's going to win? Bray has to win. No, no doubt. If, if Jericho wins Bray Wyatt, it's just, he, he might as well become the Intercontinental Champion. <laughs> Jericho's got his win. I'm glad. I'm happy he's got his win. I think now it's time for Bray Wyatt. Well, I'm going to say with Jericho this time, when he's come back, it's the short-term contract done right. He's come back. He's in a feud. He hasn't just been beaten constantly. He's come back. So when Bray does beat Jericho, it will mean more. I do agree that um, the short-term contract, I'm, I, I'm too cyber. I'm pissed off because Jericho is a name that fans like. When he cut that promo on The Authority, we were raving, we were cheering. But my thought was, yeah, cut that great promo. After Night of Champions, you're gone. But how old is Jericho now? What, 44, 45 on the world? Probably about that, yeah. If Chris Jericho was on Raw every single week, all year, one, he'd probably get injured. Two, he'd be less special, and you wouldn't care as much about him when he was there. Well, that's the, that's the uh, uh, same grace for some of these wrestlers, like the same grace for Rob Van Dam, the same grace for Brock Lesnar, or it makes him special. But to be honest, I don't think the special part is the important part. We keep talking about we need new feuds, we need guys to put people over, we need something different each week. The guys that can offer that, they're, they're, they're only here for a couple of months. What would make more sense is if they did it on like a rotation schedule. So for like three months you have Jericho in, for three months you have RVD in, for three months you have Batista in. So you've got one big name there constantly. They're not all on at the same time, then all go away at the same time. That could work. But at the same time, we have multiple wrestlers in the WWE that need to be feuds. Bray Wyatt 
he's possibly got two more matches against Jericho. As long as Bray Wyatt comes out on top in these possible last two, I think Jericho would have done his, his job but here. So far with Jericho, when did Jericho come back six weeks ago, something like that? I think that they've built Jericho up really well since he's come back because he hasn't lost and that's the way it should be. So when he does lose to Bray, you can actually think Bray Wyatt has accomplished something by winning this match. And I think, yeah, like you said, that's what's been built up. This match has to be leaning in Bray Wyatt's uh, favour. As long as this match is better than the last pay-per-view, I'll be happy. Yeah, you, you think for the second biggest pay-per-view of the year, Jer- Jericho and Wyatt are going to try and go all out to steal the show? Because you know they can. Do you think they need a stipulation, or are you okay with the Not one-on-one? Not for this one. One-on-one, because the last one was a one-on-one and Jericho won. So you have to have one-on-one and Bray wins. And then you have the stipulation to end the feud. Which will be at Night of Champions. Yep. Heath Slater got another win. Is Heath Slater on his way to being the next WWE World Heavyweight Champion? Uh, the rumour is that Slater, because he hasn't got Boy Man Man with him. But he's still got the music. <laughs> makes no sense. He hasn't got Hornswoggle. And he's going to get a somewhat of a push. Yes, he's got two wins, but not actually a proper match, pinball match over. Because in this one... Miz actually got involved. Miz hasn't wrestled. Miz has always been in commentary. That's slightly disappointing for our Intercontinental Champion, but I'm glad he got involved here. I have no problem, because the, the Miz now, it's the, the, the building up to Miz getting hit in the face. So if he was in matches every single week, at some point he would have to get hit in the face. And then it wouldn't mean anything when Ziggler actually did it at SummerSlam. Do you think Ziggler's going to be the one to... Um, hit the face or like my position will be later down the line Barrett the way that people have been getting behind Dolph Ziggler you would think that Dolph Ziggler should win this match at SummerSlam because people at Ziggler as I said to you the other night Dolph Ziggler beat Randy Orton in a house show which is a complete bizarro world but still that happened but you you just can't trust them because look how they've booked Ziggler in the past I'm going to go against that. As much as I am a fan of Ziggler, fans have been, oh, Ziggler might be good in the ring, but he's not good on the mic. He's not a draw for the WWE. But the thing is, I enjoy his performance, but when it comes to this match, I think for the sake of what match would be better to see, Ziggler as a heel versus a face Barrett, or Barrett as a face versus Miz? But then again, we, uh, do we really want people like Barrett and Ziggler with the Intercontinental Championship that we care about because look how they've booked the Intercontinental Championship in the past. Well, Barrett's hinted coming back for it. So I think, to be honest, certainly changing their mind and having Barrett go after the US. But they hinted at Triple H Big Show, if you remember. Don't remember the faction they hinted. Just because they hint something doesn't mean Vince McMahon one day will go, yeah, that's not happening anymore. So you don't, <laughs> the, only way, the only way I'd make Barrett not go after the IC is if he actually waited until... Money in the bank, and then got it entered in that as a surprise entry, and won that. No, but, no, but the way it is right now, yeah. Ziggler's hot. People are behind off Ziggler, so you should strike again. Or like that, they're behind Ziggler again. But there's actually a reason to, because Ziggler's except for this week, Ziggler's winning. But don't you think he's suddenly going to get sorry, Ziggler, a concussion? <laughs> no, we Jack Swagger's not around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we uh, Swagger's fault. So as long as they don't do that match, of course, Dolph Ziggler gets a push, and you see him on the match on Raw one week against Jack Swagger, get worried. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> Who you seen winning though? I would like to think Dolph Ziggler, but I think that I stick with Miz because Miz has only just won the title as well. I'm going to go with the Miz because again, I still want to see Miz and Barrett. I want to see Miz actually get because we've been we've been bashed. People fans have been bashing Miz for a long time since he lost possibly at WrestleMania. 27 and now he's back he's got a character that fans are complimenting and he's finally heel and he's a heel <laughs> again so why not continue pushing Miz overcoming wrestlers who you want to win who you want to see do uh, beat Miz why no JBL pulled the biggest face move ever on Raw this week when Miz was talking on commentary and he pulled his headset off <laughs> <laughs> That, that 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 pissed people off, uh, the, uh, Miz off. But uh, I, I was happy with the outcome, how Miz got involved and they had a little bit of a bite and stuff. I, I liked it. But even though Slater won, they still managed to make him look an idiot at the end. 
we're then going to shake Ziggler's hand and then trying to kick him, but Ziggler caught his foot and gave him a zigzag. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Slater's going to be the comedy winner, isn't it? He's going to win. He's going to be like Santino, I think. He's Slater. He'll be. He'll, he'll win in stupid and comedy comedy ways. Yeah, I don't think that's the point. Actually, I said to you, not, why is he Slater's finishing move? <laughs> Does anyone anyone know? <laughs> Well, let me tell you something, Mean Gene. <laughs> I think, brother, seeing these two in the ring, I, I think even though Mean Gene's old and stuff, but I think great in the ring, uh, on the mic, sorry, and uh, special occasions, maybe having every WrestleMania. I, I think exactly the same thing. Gene Oakland at SummerSlam and uh, WrestleMania doing backstage interviews with the two people in the main event before they go out for their match. I even I'm sure he's got other things going on in his life, but I think it's just like classic moments. Like you could have JR put I know he's left, but WrestleMania. Just little specialities, but Gene for this segment, good start, related to a special moment for Raw. I'm gonna say something about this because when that, I think it was at the Rock they did the birthday one for a few years ago. Yes. That was three quarters of the show and by the end it was like shut up get off my screen actually do something to to carry on with the storylines going on at least this one they just saved for the main event and it wasn't all over the show apart from the hogan yeah that's people. Like 30 seconds while they went to break it wasn't every five minutes oh by the way it's hulk hogan's birthday today the commentators <laughs> don't, don't plug in the uh app and the uh uh oh my god well, let me tell you something, Mean Gene. This Sunday at SummerSlam, only on the WWE Network, brother, for nine ninety nine. Did Hart speak? No. So he had his <laughs> he had his um speak phone. And he didn't say a word. He just stood there going. Why was he there? So it was a nice throwback to the original WrestleMania days. Oh, I thought with them three. Two. But Hart should have spoke. You should have done that. You should have spoken to Gene's head. Right. Well, yes. You got to do the high pitch voice. I can't, I can't be the voice like this. But then, then out, woo! oh, Ric Flair, the guy who's getting paid millions of dollars to do nothing. I don't quite think he's on millions. Well, <laughs> whatever he's getting. But he's done a very nice video package for Hogan as well. That bought Hogan to tears. <laughs> Hogan to tears. Uh, yeah, it showed all the uh, old uh, classic stuff, but... No, is it? Flair came out. You know, I didn't really know that Flair and Hogan was the greatest of friends. Oh, TNA yeah. stuff, a little TNA moment there, Rick Flair and Hogan. I think more WCW than TNA. Okay, yeah, <laughs> go, go back to that, yeah. <laughs> and then we had... Um, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, WrestleMania, one main event, Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper. Uh, again, these guys didn't speak. They just stood there shaking Hogan's hand. Went, but the actual ones that did speak were... <laughs> the porno music was back. Yo. <laughs> hey, yo. It was brilliant. Again, going from Hall of Fame to Monday Night Raw in the NWO shirts, which, you know, was a, a classic moment. So and you know, last night, hint for the Hall of Fame next year, NWO. Without the likes of... Book T, Shawn Michaels, no, X the original NW, and not the 500 people that Vince Russo decided to put together on Nitro every week. I think they should all come back, <laughs> all 500. And, oh, I think the best moment of this, before we get to the finale, was Kevin Nash. He's actually, like, pop idol singer. He was brilliant. See, Kevin Nash wouldn't tear his quad every week. He could be, he could be like a singer and dancer, couldn't he, as well? The new Liam Garcia, <laughs> doing the national anthem to WrestleMania. But, I was going to say, as well, Hogan and Nash and Hall. Hogan that's the youngest out of the three of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got more money, so he's probably paid for <laughs> surgery and... No, and and then we got the Beast. The Beast? He wasn't really a Beast. <laughs> but no. we got Brock Lesnar. <laughs> and this is disappointing. I love seeing Brock out there because we did get the rumour that after a nice dinner, probably in a posh restaurant, making so much racket noise and stuff... They were going to come back to his house. Why do you not beat up one of them? One. Because which one of them could safely take a bump and not get killed? Hogan would have been the most emotional one, because obviously it's in his, at his legs and it's his birthday. But I would have gone with the likes of Kevin Ash, or Big, Big Guy. I, I think the only person that still does anything remotely physical that could possibly take a bump would have, bump would have been Piper. But... 
I don't know, I would, I, would, I would have felt very, I know it would have accomplished something, but I would have felt very uncomfortable seeing Brock Lesnar putting one of those on his shoulders. But, <laughs> if, if, if that weren't going to be the case, if you weren't going to take down one of the old men, um, why would you have settled for him to not have fled the ring when Cena ran in and took Cena down? Because Paul Heyman guys don't fight for free. Remember that? But actually, go, going back, I think that, I think the blood you were in the vomit should be a shirt as well. But going back to that, when when Heyman said something and then he gave the microphone to Brock Lesnar, I just sat there and go, "Oh dear, oh no, Lesnar's going to talk." But at least he kept it very, very short. <laughs> what did he say? Party's over, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was brilliant. And talk about that. That line was short, sweet, and somewhat comedy effect. But, um, talk about comedy. <laughs> this is terrible. This feud, I'm going to give credit to John Cena. He has not once, I thought he was going to win this Raw at one point, but he saved himself. He hasn't once cut jokes on John Cena, on Brock Lesnar. Well, at least, yeah, but apart from the, like you said, he saved himself. The meningitis, the frigidiitis, the monster gyrus, whatever he was. Punk bitchitis, he said in the end. All that. And then I've got too many fingers, but I'm giving you the middle one. That was clever. That saved it. And, yeah, they have the after party, which you can catch on the WWE Network for $9.99. Terrible. $9.99? You, you don't know that? Mm, that doesn't have told me enough in the last few weeks of Raw. Well, I'll make sure we tell you enough by the end. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe Cena did actually adjustment Hogan and John, <laughs> John, Cena, John yeah. Cena heel turn exclusively on the WWE Network <laughs> yeah. for only nine ninety nine. Speciality, but I think the Raw it didn't accomplish a lot at the end, but they didn't touch each other, which is no. But as I said, there was no comedy, which actually makes John Cena a good character. He's not fantastic. He's not brilliant. He's not the greatest ever, like Michael Cole likes to say. But when he doesn't cut comedy, he's a he's a good character. It's been shown many times. Yeah, The Rock, he has to be comedy. The likes of Brock, he has to be serious. So, Punk, he has, should be serious back before Punk walks But you away. know what's going to happen when John, and this feud's over, and John Cena goes on to his next feud, for whoever it could be, Rusev, whoever, you know he's going to be cutting jokes. Do you just wait him for the next comedy segment for John Cena, which isn't funny? I cannot remember the last time I laughed at something that John Cena said that was meant to be funny. He's just terrible. But now, people, please share your thoughts on this overall not very entertaining raw. But, it, as I said to you last night, every segment did have a purpose for building up SummerSlam. Yeah, we didn't get the filler of Bo Dallas. Didn't have no problem with Bo Dallas. Fandango. <laughs> Adam Rose. Adam Rose. Sandow. Adisha Fox. <laughs> Sandow. Yeah, so at least it accomplished what it needed to, and there's possibly going to be a few extra things on SmackDown. But I, but the, the important thing is, we've been in this Raw review with me, NJ, Ross Parks. Until next time, YouTubers, thank you very much for watching this possible long Raw review, and goodbye.